Hey everybody, it's time for Facebook Live this week. I'm coming to you a day early. I appreciate those of you who are able to rearrange your schedule, but if not, that's what the replay is for, right? Um, I am doing Wiggle Worm projects this week. Hopefully you can see. It's a really, really cute set. Um, little bugs, cartoon bugs, and I have to tell you, it was probably the first to really jump out at me in the new catalog. So I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. All right, let's see who is joining us. Make sure I'm in the right place. You guys know I'm paranoid about going live in the wrong place. Okay, good. Looks like I am in the right place. My daughter has been playing on my iPad all morning. Hopefully we're all good. Okay, good. Hello. Okay. Yay. Good. I'm seeing you guys on here. Awesome. So Wiggle Worms, I don't know, have any of you ordered it yet? Have you flagged it? Have you put it on your wish list? It's so cute. Hi, Robin. Um, hi, Stacy. It's super, super cute. You can find it in the new annual catalog right here on page 104. Um, something I want to point out to you about the catalog this year is, hi, Gina. You can see the stamp set, but there's no picture of the framelits on here. Um, they've gone back and forth sometimes the pictures ha they have shown us the pictures of the dies um and then sometimes they haven't so you can't see it this year and so if you look at the catalog right here you'll see wiggle worm the stamp set 17 dollars you think okay i'm gonna get that but i want to point this box out to you it's I don't, I don't think it's very like it doesn't catch your eye right here it tells you the bundle if you want to get this the stamp set and the dies together in a bundle it's right here and you actually save 10 percent on the two of them so if you love it and you want to order them both make sure you use the item number for the bundle um, don't enter them in separately because it won't automatically take that 10 percent off you have to use that one item number now if you've spent some time in the catalog, like me, really just circling and highlighting, <laughs> um, you will have also noticed back at the beginning of the catalog, page nine, they do have all the bundles. You go through several pages of bundles. And here it is right here on the top of page nine, and you can actually see it with the stamp set and the dies. Um, so for future reference, when you're looking for those bundles, hi Denise, when you're looking for those bundles, go to the beginning of the catalog and you can see which products go together as a bundle and you'll save that 10%. It starts on page four, okay? So Wiggle Worms, if you love it, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna get those dies. I, I really, this. I mean, of course, you could use a stamp set without the dies, but why would you? They're so super cute. All right, so before we get started, I've got some prizes. Oh, and I forgot to get something that I wanted to show you. Okay, it's there. I'll show you in a second. Prizes. I haven't been live since last Tuesday when the catalog went live. That's when I did my Facebook Live last week, and I did three of them. Hopefully, you were able to go back and watch them. Um, it was a really a fun day exploring all the new products and everybody getting their new orders in. So I decided to give away three prizes. One prize for each of the um videos hi trisha and belinda i see you guys and i'm distracted by reading your comments i have to focus on what i'm saying <laughs> I'll come back and read. Um, so three prizes, three videos, three prizes. And I just did random drawings of uh, from who shared the videos. Okay, so first up, Good Morning Magnolia is Gail Gibbons. Gail, congratulations. And then the uh, Time for Tags. This is, whoops, I just tore it. This is a host set um, that you can only get when you either host a workshop and and or your order goes over $150. Um, this is called Time for Tags, and this was for sharing the in color video. And Karen Bull, congratulations. This matches our new punch. Really cool. Haven't played with it. I don't even have it myself. And then last but not least, this was the, it starts with art video. And it's the, it starts with art stamp set, Mindy Bruce. Congratulations, Mindy. Now you guys, I have a class coming up. I think I'm gonna do it in July, I may do it in August. I already have it all ready um, using this bundle. So if you like it, hold out and wait and you can order it um, with my class to go projects. And um, I always throw free things in when you buy the whole bundle. So anyway, Mindy Bruce, Karen Bull and Gail Gibbons. I don't know if I have y'all's addresses, so just please message or email me 
so that I can get them in the mail to you. You have two weeks, okay? Two weeks to claim your prize. This week I have two brand new stamp sets, Everything Amazing. This one has just really jumped out at me. Um, I ha have bought it, but I haven't done anything with it yet. It's so cute. So I'm giving two of them away today. And the way to win is to share the video and go over to my blog and enter the little raffle copter at the bottom. Um, that gives you two chances to win. And I will draw winners next Friday. I'll be live next Friday, okay? And let's see, I was gonna tell you something about this. So sharing the video, going over to my blog, and I don't know. Whew. You guys, let me tell you. Summer, summer brain. I have summer brain and <laughs> it's crazy. Right on the other side of this camera are the front windows to my house. And as I, since I've started this video, there have been kids in, running around and I'm just waiting for them to come to the door. <laughs> so bear with me, all right? Bear with me. Um, if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday before, it's Facebook Thursday this week, I always do a PDF. Here it is this week. You can go over to pinkbuckaroo.com and find it. It's going to have all the products I use as well as those measurements down at the bottom. It's always linked under the last picture, okay? Um, this week, I believe this one is the last picture, so it'll be right under there. Click it. You'll have the PDF. You'll have it. You can save it, print it, do whatever you want with it. Um, I also offer the make and takes for free with a $30 minimum order by Monday at midnight. Yeah, Shannon, it's called Kids Home for Summer. You're right. It's you, you moms out there, you totally get it. When you're with your kids, your brain like becomes like divided <laughs> and like part of it's going that way. Part of it's going that way. It is crazy. Um, but we're doing it. My kids are getting older, so they're getting better. The, the struggle now is keeping them off their devices all day, which they would be perfectly happy to sit and be quiet and what, you know, look at their devices. Hey, Gail, I just saw you jump on. Gail Gibbons, you want a prize from last week, so make sure you message me your address, okay? Um, so anyway, here are last week's make and takes. Um, there are four from last week. Those went out today, actually. They went out a day later than I like to send them, but they went out today. They should get to you in about a week if you placed an order last week. Thank you so much. Orders this week, you need to use the host code, and I just realized I didn't print it off to put it on here, but it is here on the PDF. And it'll be over on my blog, but, so you can find it. I'll also edit this video and put it up in the description for you, okay? Um, those orders have to be in by Monday at midnight, and then I will cut them all on Tuesday and ship them on Wednesday. That's just a little thank you from me for ordering. Um, on here, the only two, there's only two other things that I've, I've told you on the second page. The first one is the Bird Ballad Class, which is the thing I wanted to make sure I had for you to show you right here, Bird Ballad. I put this video up yesterday. I realized I didn't even have the video up for you guys to see what is all included. So that went up. You can go over and check it. Um, six projects. The Bird Ballad stamp set and these awesome little dies that are my favorite, a bolt of that lace ribbon. Now the lace ribbon is on back order until the 24th. So my, um, I had originally said I would have these in the mail on the 25th. I have a feeling I'm going to have to hold them a couple of days so that I can get all those bolts of the lace in your packages. But other than that, they'll be ready to go. And sometimes those things come in earlier too, so they might get out on time. We'll just have to see. Um, the deadline, you have, there's four options for this class with the, the bundle, without the bundle, PDF only. Um, the deadline to sign up is the 17th, which is Monday. All right, I cut it off on Monday. We are going on the Stampin' Up! Um, Greek Isles trip at the beginning of July. So I'm really kind of condensing things into those last few weeks of June. I've got to get everything done. So I've got an earlier cutoff than what I would like to do. Um, but if you want that class to go, make sure you message me or the link is on the PDF. Either copy and paste that link or message me and I'll send you the registration link, okay? And then the last thing is, hey, don't forget if your wish list is like a mile long, Mine's pretty much everything that has that new <laughs> next to it. You should buy the starter kit because of course you get $125 in product for $99, um, no shipping, free shipping, 
And there's no catch. I know some people feel like, oh, what does that mean I have to do? You don't have to do anything. It just means that you are, I kind of think of it as a preferred customer. You're getting 20% off all of your orders from then on. And you can also sell some on the side if you wanted or not. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to Stampin' Up. That starter kit is available to everybody. So check it out. The link is there. And it's kind of a, a good way to get all the things you want without spending all the money that it would cost. All right, last thing, the all-star tutorial PDF. I am frozen on my iPad. I hope I'm not frozen to you guys. Uh-oh, okay, now I still see me. And now the kids are in my front yard. We're gonna pretend like they're not there, but they are. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, all-star tutorial bundle this month is June. All new products used in here. Each one features a new product. So if you are interested in this, you can check out, I did a post last Thursday, and it's free with anybody who spends $50 with me um, during June or you can buy the PDF for $15, and look how thick it is. It's 12 step-by-step -step tutorials, and it's really awesome. Okay, you guys, I think we're ready to flip the camera around. I think, let's see, yep, I think we're ready. All right, let me get adjusted here, and I'm gonna cover you guys up for just a second, and then I'm gonna turn the camera. Keep your eyes closed for just a minute. So yeah, summer vacation started for my kids a week ago, last Thursday, and they, you know, I feel like we've reached a point where it's not too, too crazy. The crazy part is to the running them around. You know, we've got this lesson at this time, we've got practice of this at this time, they wanna go to a friend's house, the pool, the this, the that. That's what drives me crazy. Um, you know, trying to complete tasks in my office without stopping would be great. But so is the life of a mom, we'll survive, we always do. Okay, here are today's three projects. So here's the Wiggle Worm stamp set. It has 25 stamps in it. And I wanna point something out here. These stamps right here are designed to be stamped on the bugs to give them little, you know, designs and textures. And would you believe it that out of the four projects I made, I didn't use those one time. I think I just kind of forgot about it. So don't forget about using those. You can really make the bugs look different by using those different little textures, um, those little patterns. And the stamp apparatus will be really good to line those up. Of course, we've got really good sentiments, a bunch of them, a little ice cream scoop. Just kidding, it's a cloud, but doesn't it look like ice cream? Yeah, looks like ice cream to me little, you know, grass scene, and even the tiniest little, um, I don't know, like fireflies. And here are the dyes, they match. You've got the, all the, the bugs, a strip of grass, which I have used a ton, um, the big leaf, and then just some little things. We're gonna use almost all of these today. The first project, let's see, we're gonna put these two away, and we're gonna start with this beautiful lace project. Now, is my fan making the camera jiggle? I wanna make sure it's not doing that. Okay, it gets really hot in here in the summer and I have to have that fan on, but it makes the camera wiggle. So not only are we using the cute little bugs, we're gonna paper piece them. We are also using this die. How many of you have noticed this in the new catalog? I will admit that when I first saw this, I laughed. I thought, no way, I that is gonna be, you know what, to cut out, no way but I ordered it and I love it. And I'm gonna show you guys how it really isn't difficult to use. Um, and I'm gonna show you a trick too, to make it um, cut out a little bit better, okay? So don't be scared of it. I, I, you know, I have to admit, I truly was like, there's no way. But I was proved wrong, it's really good. This die right here is designed to, you know, if you cut out a piece, then you can put this one down and it'll cut it out the, the bottom in that like scalloped edge, but I didn't do that. I just did a straight piece. Okay, so we're gonna use that. Let's go ahead and start with our bugs. I stamped them ahead of time to give them a little drying time. Oh my goodness, here it is. All right, I need to just close my blinds. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I don't know why that distracts me so much, okay. We're not being distracted anymore. I have already stamped them on Whisper White in Memento Ink because they need to dry a little bit, especially when you use your yellows, you guys. Definitely give it some drying time. 
um, or hit it with your heat tool. For some reason, the Stampin' Blends um, pick up that ink if it hasn't had enough time to dry. Really, none of the other colors do it for me, but yellow. Um, but as long as you give it some time to dry or, or hit it with a heat tool, you won't have any problems. So I've stamped it on the white, then stamped it on a little piece of the Designer Series paper. This is from the Stacks, and these are the 2000, let's see if I can remember, 2018 to 2020 in colors. Lovely lipstick and pineapple punch, two really bright colors. Now we're going to take our Stampin' Blends. You need to color first, and I'll tell you how I know it, because the first time I did it, I went ahead and put the little pieces on them, and then I colored, and the ink bled into the DSP. So don't do that. <laughs> Learn from my mistake. Get your, um, and, and it doesn't require a lot of coloring because most of the body is gonna be covered up with that cute DSP, that gingham print. And I'm just gonna use the dark pineapple punch. And then I'm gonna take the light, lovely lipstick. And I'm gonna color in his wings like that. And I know that you guys are probably thinking, now, these have dyes. How are you gonna cut that tummy out? Yes, I'm actually going to fussy cut. I'm not going to, I am gonna use the dyes, but I'm going to require you guys to fussy cut. Some of you do not like it, and I am going to teach you to like fussy cutting. Now I'm gonna take the dark and just kind of go around the tummy right there like that, okay? And then you know what else? I liked coloring in his mouth. That one I left white and that one I colored in. Usually I'll color over <laughs> I'll color over his mouth on accident, so I have to color it all the way in. But I do like leaving it white. All right, so on the DSP, get your paper snips. You want your when you're cutting something like you know, fussy cutting, something uh, small, you want your smallest, sharpest scissors. And usually I tell you guys to cut like there's a cloud around it, leaving a little bit of white space. But we don't wanna do that here. We wanna cut right on the line. So then when we set it down on there, it's gonna just blend right in with the black line that's already there. All right, so go around like this. This one's cute. They're very cute little bugs. We had a bug set years ago, but it they were like realistic bugs. These are like cartoon bugs. And I think that this set is perfect for kids, you know, kid cards. Even though this one I don't think is necessarily a kid card. More, you know, whimsical and fun. Just kind of uplifting and just, you know, cards that will make someone smile. And great for the summer too. All right, so I put glue dots on that because it's very small. You could use your liquid glue if you like liquid glue. There we go, like that. Okay, now we're gonna use those framelits. Let's see, I've got, we've gotta cut out the grass too. So we're gonna use the grass framelit and the little matching framelits. And then while we have our die cut machine over here, whoops. We'll cut that beautiful lace too. Good, thank you for sharing, you guys. Gingham bugs, Trisha, of course. Gingham everything, everything gingham. <laughs> I love gingham so much. I know, even when it's probably not in style. Oops, I did that earlier. You guys, these framelits don't work if you use them on the wrong bug. <laughs> you gotta line them up with the right bug. But yeah, gingham bugs, why not? I mean, the bug is like smiling, so he can be gingham too. I know, silly. All right, where did I put the grass, you guys? There it is. Okay, we're gonna put the grass along the bottom of this little scrap piece. Um, the grass is about, I, I measured it, three and a fourth inches long so you really just need about three and a fourth by one inch to cut the grass that sounds funny cut the grass and I think I did mine a little bit too long so we'll just continue that with our scissors so it doesn't cut the bottom it just cuts the top and the sides okay and we'll get these guys out of here I don't know they kind of look like girls to me are they boy bugs or are they girl bugs 
or am I overthinking it? I think I'm overthinking it. <laughs> All right, so let's use this beautiful stitched lace piece, the one I laughed at and said, no way. It has made me look silly because it proved me wrong. So what I am putting down here is a dryer sheet. I've talked to you guys about dryer sheets before, right? This is just from the Dollar Tree. I prefer the Dollar Tree dryer sheets to the expensive dryer sheets, not just because they are, um, not just because they're cheap, but because they're not as strong smelling and as thick. I think they work better. Okay, so this is a piece of four, uh, Whisper White four by five and a fourth. And I'm gonna lay that on there. And then we'll put our top plate back on. And I'm gonna run it through twice. Whenever you have a die that has lots of cutting surfaces, cutting edges, you need to run it through a couple of times, maybe even three. Let's do three for good measure. The dryer sheet has a little bit of stickiness in it, and it also gives you a little bit tighter of a fit because you're putting another layer in there. The little sticky part will help get some of those little sticky pieces out. Not all of them in this case. One thing I do wanna show you is that once you cut it, turn it over and if you see like, oh, it didn't cut very well in the middle, because sometimes these big ones don't cut very well in the middle. Turn it upside down like this and run it through like that. Turn it, you could turn it that way. Just put it in a few different ways to get it um, you know, so that it gets that pressure in different ways. And it cuts beautifully. I've cut it about four or five times and truly each time it cuts really well. Now, we've got about 500 little dots <laughs> that we've got to get out. So this is really when you want to use your dye brush. Not many stuck to the dryer sheet, but that's okay. The dryer sheet was still there to kind of provide more of a thickness and a tighter fit through my die cut machine. And I'm just gonna really go through it. Look, yeah, you'll have confetti for, you know, your birthday parties, whatever you've got coming up. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Little dots everywhere. Now, I don't think I would wanna mass produce these, you guys. Probably not but making a few of them, you will be just fine. Now I'm just gonna take my, take your pick tool and poke it through here and get it off. Well, it's really on there, there we go. It didn't wanna come off. So see now, look, I don't have very many of those little dots left. And what I do have left, I can go back with my die brush. The die brush, by the way, this one is retired and there's a new one that attaches to your take your pick tool. And I haven't gotten it yet, I need to get it one of those things that I don't think about when I'm putting in my orders. All right, so there we go. And a million little dots. Okay, now how are we gonna adhere this to our card base, you're asking? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna use, look, I'm using liquid glue. You guys who know me know, not a fan of the liquid glue. I'm not, but on this, project I am. I'm going to put some here on my silicone sheet, my silicone mat. We sell these too, and I did not put this in the supply list, but if you search the website for silicone mat, you'll find it. And this is a sponge, and I'm just going to sponge the back side of it. That way we won't have any adhesive showing through. All right, and hold it in place. That way you won't get glue on the front of it. There we go, gotta move quickly, get it stuck down, right like that. Oh, perfect. And you might wanna just put something on it and let it sit there and get stuck down. Easy peasy, right? I like doing that. That's a great way to use your adhesive. Okay, let's layer all of our goodies now. We've got our I moved my trash can and it's bothering me. I need to bring it back over. Bring my adhesives over too. All right. <laughs> Shannon, neutered bugs. Yeah, well, I'm not sure about that. That's too funny. All right, I'm gonna put this right here. This little piece of grass. I'm doing it kind of over on the left side. And then here's your DSP. This is from the Bright Stack. 
This is the granny apple green, just about a half of an inch, quarter of an inch to half of an inch width, just to kind of give it a little more oomph. And then I'm gonna put the, the I almost called them dogs, the bugs there. And I'm gonna put the dimensionals at the bottom of the bugs because you'll see why in a second. And I'm just gonna, let's put that one there and that one there. We're going to put their little, they've got a banner they're holding and we're going to adhere it behind them. That's why we put those down at the bottom. So their banner is a toothpick and you're just gonna cut it in half and get your glue dots. And I'm gonna stick it behind like that. Stick this one behind like that. All right, let's stamp our sentiment. Here we go, lovely lipstick. And we're gonna stamp it right in the middle of just a very small piece of Whisper White, about a quarter inch by two and a half. And then you're gonna trim it down. You want it to not be much bigger than your words. Now let's see if I can do this without smearing the ink. I've put some glue dots there and there we're gonna stick, we're gonna move those so that they match. There we go. And last but not least, you guys know me. Oh, Michelle Watt, I hear what you're saying. Your problem with Stampin' Up! is that you want to buy everything. Welcome to the club. I am the president of that club. That's why you buy the starter kit and then you get your discount on everything. And, and you join the club of all of us who have to have everything, who want everything. All right, a little twine bow right there. Now, something I realized this morning, see how that kind of moves like that? Just take another glue dot, the tip of your snips, lift that up and put that glue dot under the toothpick there, under the sign, so no one will even see it. And then that will hold it in place better. And then, Ta-da, you are done. What do you guys think? Gingham bugs, lace, kind of reminds me of a little picnic. I don't know, it's pretty cute if you ask me. I love it. All right, project one is done. And look, I've actually done it three times. Did you notice? I have pre-recorded these videos, so there will be clean recordings. Yay, I haven't done that in weeks. And that way, if you want to come back and refer to the video, you can, and you don't have to watch all of the Facebook Live to do it. Okay, thanks, you guys. I'm glad you like it. Let's do project number two. Let's move all of this out of the way. And project number two. Now, Denise was over here yesterday, so I asked her what she thought. This card looks kind of boring to me, you know, like, well, that's okay, that's cute. However, when you find out it has a secret slider window like that, it's way cuter. How fun is that for a little kid for their birthday? Wouldn't they love that? Happy birthday, little bug. So that's our second project. And we're gonna color all of these with Stampin' Blends, all right? Let me get my tray. This one has lots of of tools and things that we need. See, I've got a big tray here of all kinds of things. We're also gonna use this stamp set called All Wired Up. Have you guys seen this one? You know how I feel about background stamps. They are my favorite. And so I order them on my first order. Whatever new background stamps there are, I order them on my very first order. It's a great way to add texture to your projects without really using paper, you know, uh, pattern paper. All right, let me get all my things. We're using Calypso Coral for the worm, Granny Apple for the praying mantis, who's kind of weird. You guys see him? He's a little weird. Lovely lipstick and is that right? No, we need pool party is what we need. Pool party, let me look. Pool party. Mm -hmm, yeah, I think we have them all. Where's my other pool party marker? There it is. All right, one tiny sip of water and I will start coloring these guys. I have stamped them all 
in and I'm going to sit down because I do my, I color much better when I'm sitting. I've stamped them all in Memento Black because we're using uh, Stampin' Blends and I hate that it's so far from the camera. I wish I could color up here for you guys so you could see, but I don't know. It's not helping. Um, but the clean recording, I did zoom in in case you really need a good coloring lesson. Go watch the clean recording. I'll have those up this evening. All right, so Memento Black, which is a water-based ink. We're using that because these are alcohol markers. I'm going to start on this really weird praying mantis guy in light granny apple green. He is weird because praying mantises are weird anyway. They look weird. So he looks like he should look, right? Now I'm going to take the dark color in his little nose and then right here I'm going to kind of go in his elbows, add some dark under his head, thorax, abdomen, right? <laughs> I remember that song from kindergarten, head, thorax, abdomen. Anyways, I don't know. I'm not a bug expert, but I think that's his abdomen. Now take your light and blend that up. We, this is so random. I was reading an article, some kind of news article to my husband. I, I think it was about the baseball player that was um, shot, Big Poppy, in the Dominican Republic this week. And it said he was shot, he was injured in his thorax. And I looked at my husband, this is like Calypso Coral. And I looked at my husband, I said, humans have thorax. I thought that was just the bugs. And we laughed and laughed. I don't know, it's probably a legitimate term, but oh my gosh, it made me laugh so hard. I've never heard a human body part being referred to as a thorax. Wouldn't you say like stomach or chest? I thought it was weird. Just a random, I don't know, thought. Some, some of you are probably going to correct me and that's okay, you can because we, we literally were laughing. Belinda, I'm glad you're here. You, Belinda and I taught kindergarten together for many, many years, and she knows the song I'm singing, I'm sure. And she's laughing with me. All right. <laughs> Kathy, you like the praying mantis? I like him too, he's super weird. But praying mantises are super weird. If you see them in person, they are so weird looking. Okay, so there's the worm. I did darken the lines and then went back and blended it with the light. Sorry, I'm distracted by my thorax story. All right, for this guy, what do you think this is? Is this a dragonfly, you guys? What do you think? I'm not sure. I think he's a dragonfly. Um, for him, we're gonna use pineapple punch and I'm gonna go all over with light pineapple punch. And then, get my dark pineapple punch and I'm gonna do the under wing. I'm not looking at y'all's comments. Are you making fun of me? Are you, are you laughing? Oh no, you're not. Okay, good. The, the mantis looks like he's dancing. Yeah, he does. All right, dark right here. I wanted this to kind of be like an ombre look. So dark, dark, dark. Then I'm gonna take my light again and color in that middle part. So it's dark, medium, light. All right, next is, I think this is a ladybug. What do you guys think? She's cute and plump, and she's gonna be a pool party colored ladybug because you know what? Who cares? She can be any color she wants. Color her in with a light. If you are thinking about it and you're going slow, go around her mouth, leave her mouth white. Then take the dark. You guys aren't telling me, what do you think? What I want to know, do you use the word thorax to refer to body, human body parts? Because I think it's kind of all weird. Now, she looks like she's, <laughs> never mind, I'm not gonna say it. She's cute, we're just gonna say that. Blend that, that little shading part in, last but not least. Yeah, plump Michelle, she's plump for sure. I like her. Last but not least, we're going back to this little beetle. Oh, he has wings. I don't know. Do he's Maybe he's a cockroach. Cockroaches have wings. Some beetles have wings, right? Um, 
he is going to be a lovely lipstick cockroach <laughs> things you thought you'd never say now I'm gonna take the dark and just kind of like we did before right there and look I went over his mouth a little bit so I am gonna make it dark I can never quite get it right with just white okay so there we go we've got all five let's move all these markers now because they're funky colors why not add some glitter right so wink of Stella these guys I mean let's make it fun wink of Stella I'm gonna put around her little <laughs> she's looks like she has you know a bosom she's very in, well endowed that little ladybug I, know. I don't know the wheels are coming off you guys I think <laughs> the wheels are coming off okay add in your wink of Stella and then you are ready to do some die cutting but first let's make that frame I want to be able to die cut everything at one time and you can see this this frame my idea was that they were kind of in like a little bug catcher I don't know kind of um, so what this is is a piece of pineapple punch <laughs> you guys are laughing at me this is a piece of pineapple punch that measures let me look at my notes remember right here on the PDF right down here this is where you're really probably going to need the measurements today this is two and five eighths by four and five eighths and we're going to use the stitched rectangle that measures and i put it on here for you three and three fourths by one and a half and i will tell you that's approximate because these are not exact on the eighth of an inch they're not um so it's the one that you know if you have them put them right here and see which one is centered, okay? All right, so we're gonna do that, but first let's stamp it with the all wired up, it's like chicken wire background stamp. And I've got my Stamparatus because I prefer to use my Stamparatus with my background stamps. And we need pineapple punch ink. And so it'll just be tone on tone, pineapple punch ink on pineapple punch cardstock. And then let's make sure it's lined up and then just to stamp it. Mm, there we go. All right, it's light. And I think my pineapple punch um, ink pad needs to be re-inked. Okay, so we're gonna cut this out right here. We're also going to cut out the grass. Let's get the framelits and, or the dies and see what we need. There's the grass, and we're only doing a little bit of the grass. We're also gonna do some um, lovely lipstick mushrooms, okay? And we're gonna save that because we're gonna do something else with that. All right, so then we're gonna, let's see, we'll do, let's pull this over. Lots of cutting here. The first thing I wanna do, and I'm gonna do it by itself so I make sure that it stays centered, is this little rectangle stitched rectangle right there in the middle I'm gonna run that through Susan yes so Susan says yes we have a thorax the heart and lungs reside inside the thor oh that sounds very medical <laughs> no I'm glad you said it I don't I was asking I just think it sounds like a bug part I've never heard a human referred to with a thorax and I figured it must be right if it was in a news article, right? Because nothing would be wrong in a news article. But it just made me laugh. I just think, okay, that's, that's some strange wording. But good, thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling me. All right, now, here we go. These guys look so much the same, these two. All right, I wonder, I probably won't be able to get all of these... What did I, why, oh my goodness, Erica, upside down. Hello. I don't know if I'll be able to get all of these on here because you guys know the little ones jump around and I don't think I'm even gonna try because those are too close anyway. All right. My magnet sheets, Michelle, are for, from Stampin' Storage. It's an online place. You can get them there. You can also get um, vent covers. They're for covering vents, obviously, and they're magnetic, um, you know, at Home Depot or Amazon. Um, people get them at different places. These are from that company that, 
does um, all different kinds of storage for stamping people. And it's called Stamp and Storage. Um, and they're really sturdy and heavy duty, so I really like them. Um, but I will tell you that somebody like me, it does not keep me from losing my dies. In fact, when we're done here today, I will be digging through my recycle box. That sounds like a good job for my girls to earn some money. I had a, I had a heart die in my hands and I was looking through my scraps for a piece. And then I got, there was so much in there that I just started throwing a bunch of it into my recycle bin. And then I lost the die and I couldn't, it wasn't in my hand anymore. So needless to say, I'm pretty sure it's in my recycle bin. So it's going to need to be, I know Denise, I know. Denise is my assistant and she knows that I lose things constantly, but I caught it. And you know, it's funny because I had several in my hand like this and I was digging through the paper. And then I realized one of them was gone. Luckily I realized it, right? Okay, now let's talk about this piece. We need to stop for a second and talk about the embossing situation. When I designed this card, I used this embossing folder. Lots of leaves, is that what it's called? Layered leaves. It is one of our previously named dynamic textured embossing folders. And it carried over to the new catalog. And as you guys may know, we have made a change in our die cutting situation, um, new supplier. So all of the embossing folders that have carried over are in a transition, <laughs> in a transitional period where we can't order them. The ones that carried over. So, you know, the old ones, the basket weave, um, any of them that don't say new, can't be ordered right now. I know that sounds really confusing. So if it's an old one that carried over, you can't order it right now because we just don't have them yet from the new supplier. Not that they're going away. We just, you know, we're kind of in that weird, like, okay, we're waiting, um, period. And of course, the one that I used without realizing it is one of those 3D embossing folders. It's down here, uh, layered leaves, 3D embossing folder. So I apologize, of course. I did, would never have used something that you couldn't order when I was planning. I just didn't plan. So there are other things. I think the brick wall would be cute. The subtles, the wood planks. Um, really, you could do anything. And instead of embossing, you could even do a background with paper or um, stamping the leaves. Um, so I did it ahead of time just because I didn't want to use that. I don't know. I just feel bad that I used it. We will be able to order it. We don't know when, but it's not right now. I don't know. I'm, I've had several emails about the embossing folder question uh, situation. So that's, I wanted to tell you about it. Um, that's why you can't order any of the carryover ones. Now, these right here that have the red in are new and they are the same... Let's see, how do I wanna describe it? They are the same type of item. They are a thick embossing folder, but now they're called 3D embossing folder. Um, and you need a special plate for it. I just got mine today. Once you buy the plate, then you don't need it ever again, but you do have to buy this plate to go with our new 3D ones. It's because they are a little, either a little bit thinner or thicker, I can't remember. And, they need a special plate, so here it is. And I will use one of the new ones here shortly in a few weeks to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so back to our regular, regularly scheduled program. I just wanted you to know that that's the situation with the embossing folders, but they're not gone forever. They're just gone for right now while we get the new embossing folders from our new supplier in. Okay. Now, we've made our little our little frame. One thing I'm gonna do is take my one inch circle punch and punch kind of just a, a quarter of a circle right there on the edge. That's gonna help us, give us room to do that little pull out. Then you're gonna get your foam adhesive strips. And this is, look, this is all I'm down to. <laughs> I just ordered some new ones. Um, these are so good, they're great for shakers. You wanna put, put your foam adhesive strip right above that stitching line. And 
I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it down here too. This will prevent us sliding out the other end, okay? All right, now, um, who said that? Carla, will sift recycling bin for stamped products come over? I'll let you, because I doubt my girls will be like, oh yeah, I looked, it's not there. You know how they are, kids. But you can come over and do it. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Okay, now that I've made a little bit of a frame, a three-sided frame, I am going to stick this down, but I do want to give you just a little bit a uh, word of caution. I have another measurement here for you for this pullout piece, and see I've embossed it also to match the background. Um, I wrote down the measurements were one and seven eighths by four and a half. And when you put your adhesive strips, give it a little test run right here, because if your adhesive strips are further out or closer down, you might need to trim it down or make it whiter, okay? So just check it out, but it looks like mine are pretty good. As long as you stay right on the outside of those stitch lines, you should be all right. All right, so let's put this down. I think I will put that. I was gonna do the deboss side, but I don't think I'm going to. So put that down like that. Now let's get our little bugs and our mini dimensionals. And I'm gonna put the little, did we decide, did you guys say, do you think this is a dragonfly? I wasn't watching. I think it is. Or maybe it's a mosquito. <laughs> I think a dragonfly would be better. Okay, now I'm just gonna use a little bit of this grass and I'm gonna do just regular adhesive and put that right there. I just, for some reason, felt like that praying mantis needed a little something to stand on. I'm not sure why I felt that way, but for some reason I didn't like him just standing there on the edge. All right, I'm gonna put one mini dimensional there, and then I'm gonna come over here and put another one to connect him right there. Okay, now for our little funny little bugs. We're gonna adhere these flat so that our little slider piece will slide right over them. One little fat bug, one little fat worm, and then one more little fat bug. Whoa! Yeah, Shannon, a lot of work this card, I agree. But, you know, if you had somebody special you wanted to make it for, like a, a niece or a nephew, I think that would be really special. Okay, let's see. Ta-da, see how that works. Oh my goodness, I love it when it works. <laughs> you know, sometimes you work on something, work on something, and you get to the end, you're like, oh, something's wrong with it, it doesn't work, it doesn't fit, it doesn't measure right. I don't know, I'm always just waiting for that moment. Even though I've done this card, this is the third time. You just never know. This is our Granny Apple Green woven ribbon. I'm just gonna use a glue dot. I'm gonna stick it to that little slider piece. There they are, our little bugs. All right, now while I have the glue dots, let's do these little mushrooms. Like that, there we go. And now our sentiments. And we're gonna do happy birthday, little bug, and lovely lipstick. And I'm doing it on Whisper White on just a scrap because I'm just gonna cut it down. I just wanna cut out the words. And I think I'm gonna do this down here in the corner so I can do less cutting. Okay. Um, on a side note, you guys, we have this new product called uh, Pigment Sprinkles. It's like brush -o. And I have been playing with them the last day or two, and oh my gosh, they are amazing. The colors are bright and bold and beautiful and super, super duper strong. <laughs> and I say that because I wore those colors all day yesterday, and my hands still have a little bit of pink from just using it, just touching it one time this morning. They are awesome, and I'm gonna show you guys um, here in a few weeks also. They are much brighter than the, um, what do you, I, why do I always forget the name of 
brusho. I, I can never remember that word. They're much brighter and bolder than those brusho colors we had. They're stamping up colors and they're brights, you know? So of course I love them. But they are awesome. If you liked brusho, I think you're really gonna like these. All right, now I'm gonna make these kind of crooked. I want them kind of silly. Oh, Lisa, your your oldest daughter's name is nickname is Little Bug. That's cute. Well, you need the set for sure, for sure. Okay, little just glue dots, and I'm gonna slide the little window and put that right there. And we are done. We just gotta put it on our card base and save this, right? Wouldn't that make a cute little gift tag? Put a little bug right here and a little like, happy birthday and a ribbon and you've got a birthday tag. So cute. All right. I'm just gonna put it on a granny apple green card base. Right there. And there is your fancy slider card. Let's look at it again. Ta-da! And I think that the little wink of Stella just really makes it even extra special. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you like it? It's so fun. It is fun. I worked on that card for a long time, let me tell you. I had an, that idea in my mind and it took me a little bit of time to get it figured out exactly what I wanted to do. All right, we've got one more, so don't go. And this one's not quite as complicated, I promise. Let me move all my goodies. And I've done some of the work ahead of time on this next project too, because I knew we would be running long today. We have an orthodontist appointment at 345. So no messing around for me. Okay, last project. Now remember you guys, this is one of the make and takes you'll get in the mail free from me if you put in an order between now and Monday at midnight. Make sure you use the host code. I didn't print it out, but it's right here on the PDF and it's over at pinkbuckaroo.com too, okay? Okay, let's do our last project. It's a 3D and I have to tell you that this is not the third project I had planned for us, but it came to me yesterday and I did it and I loved it and I was like, this is our project. So it's just a little treat holder and all I had were gummy worms, so I put gummy worms in a cello bag, but you know, I mean, the possibilities are endless, really. There's all different kinds of candies and stuff that you could put in there and you don't necessarily have to do something bug related. It says, you amaze me, get it? Because they're buzzing around. Um, so don't feel like you have to do bugs. It could be really, really could be anything. All right, let's make the box first. And once again, remember that the measurements will be over on my blog right now, pinkbuckaroo.com. Underneath the very last photo, you click on that link and it'll bring that PDF up. And this one has a little bit of a tricky measurement in it. Not super tricky, but you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. All right, so let me look at my notes myself. We'll move these guys out of the way. This is a piece of granny apple green that measures five and a half by 11. And you're gonna score the short side at one and three fourths and three and three fourths. Then you're gonna turn it that is totally crooked. Look at that. My cutting was horrible. But you know what? I think it's going to be fine because we're going to cut most of that off anyway. Weird. I can't believe I did that. Now, turn it to the long side and do four and a half and six and a half. But wait, you've got to also do four and seven, but you've got to stop at that score line, okay? So don't go past that score line, four and seven, and then turn it over and do four and seven again, okay? All right, now let's see how bad my crooked paper makes this. I think it'll be fine. Burnish all your lines, use your bone folder. Of course, I don't have mine today. Then get your scissors or your trimmer and we're gonna cut out the four corners. We're gonna go all the way to that score line that goes across, but we're not gonna cut it, we're not gonna cut it off here. We're gonna cut it off at that little score line that we made. That's gonna create a little tab for you, okay? See that? So go all the way, whoops. I really need to use my trimmer on this because I am not a straight cutter. 
There we go. And then cut at the short score line. And then do the same over here. All the way to the second score line, but cutting on the first. Now these um, are really very easy to make. And this is something you could make if you needed, you know, like 10 or 20 of them. And I think you would be just fine. I don't think it would take you forever. Okay, so this is what your piece looks like. I know sometimes you like to stop the video and look. That's what it looks like. We have these little tabs here. Now we're gonna use another new product. This is the Delightful Tag Topper Punch. Isn't it cute? Love a Tag Topper Punch. I'm gonna, before I use it, let me also point out to you that this has th um, three different size guides. So you can use this Tag Topper Punch on a one inch wide piece, a one and a half inch wide, or a two inch wide piece, which is what we're doing today. And they'll all work. So just put it right in there and punch. Isn't that beautiful? And right in here and punch. All right, now we're gonna put, let's see, we're gonna put adhesive on the outside of these little tabs that we made. You wanna use tear and tape or Tombow. Don't use your snail. Now I'm gonna fold these guys right up like that. Uh oh, there we go. All right, and then you put your little treat in there. And you could do this different colors, different, you know, all different kind of things. We did one of these, I don't know if you guys remember in the fall, and we put a K cup in there, it fit perfectly. Now we're gonna pinch these like this, and we're gonna tie that beautiful new ribbon. Um, this is, and I'm gonna set this in here to make it a little heavier that makes it easier to tie when there's something in there. Um, this is called the tri-colored ribbon, the purple tri-colored ribbon. It is what I believe, gorgeous grape, Highland Heather, and our new purple posy. It is very silky and soft, and I love it. It ties beautifully. It's got a little bit of, well, I don't wanna say it has a shine to it, because it's not shiny but it's got a little bit of a shimmer. No, not shimmer, that's not the right word, sheen. Maybe sheen. It's not matte, I'll say that. It's not matte, but it's not quite shiny. It's really beautiful. I hope that we have more of these in our future, different colors. It's a good width too. See how nicely that ties? All right, so there we go. Now let's make the tag. And I have done a lot of this ahead of time. You're going to need to cut out a whisper white stitched circle. This is the second largest. And look, I've already colored our two little dragonflies in um, Highland Heather and Lovely Lipstick Stampin' Blends. Then I'm gonna get the little ice cream stamp otherwise known as a cloud, and stamp it in pool party, like that. Then I'm gonna take my light pool party, stamp and blend and color it in. Now if you guys wanna come back and make these later, I will, I've already pre-recorded the clean recordings, what I call clean recordings, the just, you know, get it done without all the chit chat. And those will be on my YouTube channel this evening probably. We're going to see a movie after our orthodontist appointment, so it will probably be later this evening. They're already uploaded, I just need to edit them. Not edit them, but add, you know, add all the little details. Okay, now, I've colored those in. Let's add the grass down here along the bottom and then turn it over. This is Granny Apple Green again. I love all these bright colors, you guys. They're my favorite. <sighs> Terry, it, you're done with lunch or you just started lunch? Satin, who said that, Donna? That's exactly what I was looking for, satin, yes. Okay, now we need our mini dimensionals, which have run away, here they are. And we're going to put these guys like they're flying in two different directions. We'll do this one up here. And we'll do this one going like that. Mm, he's too far out. Let's put him 
a little bit further in like that. Now our sentiment is a little tiny strip again. And you amaze me. So clever. Memento black. There we go. And I'm going to cut it at an angle. One like that and one like that. And then put a little bit of adhesive there and I'm going to cover up that little bald spot. There we go. Now I felt like it just needed a little more something something and I really wanted to use this leaf. So I cut it out in soft sea foam, kind of a subtle green, and I'm just going to kind of layer it back there behind. And there you have it. You have a fun little, where are my regular dimensionals? You have a fun little treat box for really any time of the year, but it was it's especially cute in the summer with these little bugs. There we go. How fun and cute. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you like the bugs? Am I crazy to love our little bugs? All right, now let's look at everything that we did. Let's review class. Here is my, th look, I have three of them. What am I gonna do with them? Who am I gonna give them to? Anybody, I think my post lady, she needs some, my mail, my mail lady. All right, so we made those. We made the little slider card. So cute. We made the lace, the stitched lace. And then yesterday I showed you guys this card. Um, I will have this one up probably tomorrow or Saturday on my blog. Um, there's our little guy again. I use the Buffalo Check background stamp. And these are from a new die set called S Sweet, no, yeah, Sweet Silhouettes. I was thinking Silhouette Dreams, but no, Sweet Silhouette. And um, they're just really cute. I know several of you were asking about those. All right, if you want these make and takes for free in the mail, um, make sure you put your order in by Monday at midnight. Um, use the host code. And if your order is over $150, you guys don't use the host code because you'll get Stampin' Rewards and I will still send you the projects for free. All right, don't forget to register for your bird ballad class. That deadline is Monday as well. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today and being patient with my oh, summer brain. I appreciate it. I will be live again next week on Friday and I'm cooking up something cute for next week. So I hope you will join me on Friday at two o'clock central. Thanks you guys so much. Have a great week. Bye.